Okay, so let's show that every P group is solvable. So here is the precise statement. We have a group, say G, of order the power of a prime. Say P to the M power where P is prime. Then solvable means that there exists a sequence of subgroups in the form G0 and so on, GR, where the last is the whole group and the first G0 is just a trivial group with the properties that each uh, of these subgroups is normal relative to the next one. So G i minus 1 is normal inside GI and the quotient is um, always abelian. In other words, this uh, property of being uh, solvable, so this is the our statement here, is a sort of measure of uh, how non-abelian a group is in, this, is in the sense that, of course, for an abelian group, we have an obvious such sequence, which is just G0, the trivial group, and G1, being equal to the whole group, and uh, um, in the non-abelian case, then this, this can can be considered the, the minimal length of such a sequence could be considered uh, somehow a measure of non-abelianity or non-commutativity. So I want to give a very explicit and constructive proof. In fact, we write down an explicit algorithm that can be even uh, in theory, implemented by a computer to construct such a sequence, because of course the, there is no unicity uh, here claimed for this sequence. So the algorithm is based on the following basic observation. Which is the fact that we look um, at the center, we use we construct a sequence by constructive so consecutive centers, and the basic observation is that in our case, so whenever we have the order of a group which is a power of, of a prime, then the center is not trivial. Is not reduced to the identity element. It, the reason is basically one can, it's not so hard to show that in such a case p, the number p has to divide the order of the center and therefore the center is not trivial. So given this let's proceed with our algorithm and explain the steps. The first step we simply put obviously G0 to be the trivial group, trivial subgroup of G and for, and for G1 we take the center. Now of course the center is always normal in G so we have our first condition satisfied. Um, moreover, well, trivially G1 over G0 is trivially isomorphic to Z, G, and this is abelian. By definition. Um, well, of course, if the, the center, so for step number two, if 
the center is the whole group, meaning that the G we started with was already abelian. As said before, then we are done. We constructed our sequence, so we are finished. Otherwise, we proceed as follows. We observe that, well, the order of the center also is a power of p, uh, because the center is a subgroup of g, which is uh, of order power of p. And therefore, also for the quotient, we have that p divides the order of g over g1, g over the center, and actually we have that this order has to be also a power of p, say p power k, for some k at least 1. So we can apply again our observation and we have that uh, this quotient group has a non-trivial center. So we consider the center of G over G1, and we know that this is a abelian and normal non-trivial subgroup of G over G1. Non-trivial again by our main uh, observation above. Now, if you remember, in the video on the third isomorphism theory, uh, theorem, we also established the correspondence between subgroups of the quotient, here, normal subgroups, in particular normal subgroups of the quotient, and we observe that this is, these are in one-one correspondence between some, between subgroups we we'll call this G2 of G, which contain uh, the subgroup G1. In other words, there is a unique G2 subgroup, normal subgroup of G, containing G1, which corresponds to this uh, center Z of G over G1, in the sense that, uh, well, the quotient, the well, the quotient, G two over G one, is uh, precisely isomorphic to this center. So, in particular, in particular, this guy here. Is abelian. Okay, so what we have, we have again another group G2, which contains, which contains G1, and such that the quotient G2 over G1 is abelian. So precisely what we wanted. Now, again, either we stop here, so in step four we might have uh, come to the point where G2 is the whole group, and then we stop. Otherwise, we repeat this process. In fact, this um, is an algorithm in the sense that in a finite number of steps it has to come to an end and there will be eventually a gr given by this successive construction which has to be equal to g simply by the fact that the, you see the order of this group increases with, uh, with each step. So let me write this, the order of gi will be always strictly, strictly uh, greater than the order of g i minus 1. So the process 
terminates. In other words, we have at some point some group GR equal to G.